So you're going to do a watercolor demo? Yes, sir. I've got this drawn out in, in more of a rectangular format. I could easily crop this thing along about here, and it might be that that's the way to go when we get going. But let me go ahead and get going. The other thing that I want to say real quick is I'm, I'm going to paint this sort of in a, in a complementary color using, using blue and orange. And I did that just, uh, I don't always do that, but I like to do that because look at all the range of, of colors and values that I can get using only two colors. While I'm only using orange and blue, French Ultramarine Blue, Daniel Smith, and I'm using Transparent Pure All Orange by Core, those two colors, there's a infinite uh, values and chromas that I can come up with out of that. So, so you made those, all those colors from the mixture of those two colors? Of those two colors. And do you go through this uh, this exercise before you do a painting? Typically, to you know what what is your going to be your dominant colors and colors used? I do usually, or sometimes I just know where I'm going with it because I've done it enough. But I'll do these kind of things a lot, just just to sort of see what are the possibilities here, you know. And uh, I enjoy doing that because every pair of complementary colors and, you, and you're talking about a whole different different world look at what tom schaller does with with his complementary colors you know it's just incredible um i've learned a lot from him but anyway that's what i'm planning on doing so i'm gonna i'm gonna start with a an orange kind of a sky we have good dust storms every once in a while and so we get these orange dust filled skies and so they're kind of fun to paint so what i'm going to do is just lay in a little bit of water here just to kind of pre-wet them what i want to try know what kind of paper you're painting on and what kind of brush you're using this is saunders waterford it's my favorite paper uh, 140 pound cold press here are the brushes that i plan to use i'll usually start with a mop these are all escoda brushes because joseph says that that I'm supposed to. And uh, if I if I use the same brushes that Joseph uses, I can maybe paint like him. Well, it's kind of like if you use the same golf club, clubs that Tiger uses. Exactly. Same I understand principle. his are not gonna be used for a while. Too soon? Yeah, yeah, too soon. So I'll start with a, with a mop and then I'll go to a, a number 12 pointed round and then I'll kind of work myself down. I usually f finish up some detail stuff with the with a rigger from Cheap Joe. And so I have a hard time painting and talking at the same time. So I'm gonna just start with a little orange sky and I'm painting on about a 30 degree angle. So I'm gonna let this kind of uh, work its way down. My th my thinking is that, that is that I'm gonna leave uh, the brightness of the sky up in this corner over here because all assuming that the sun is coming sort of this way, my shadows are all gonna be going that way. So I'm gonna leave the sky a little brighter over here. And then I'm just gonna tease this uh, bead down the down the page. And, and I have to always remind myself to wait on it and let it do its thing. You can see that bead forming right there. Always have to be very conscious of how much water is in your is in your brush at any time or you'll get you'll get overloaded. I'm gonna tease this on down and let it let it just sort of do its thing. I've been playing with watercolor lately after Watercolor Live and uh, really enjoying it. Yeah, that's great. I knew you were, and that's that's fantastic. I, I just, I, you know, a, a somebody just sent me a kit of Russian watercolors. It was very generous. Somebody else just sent me a, a whiskey painters kit uh -huh. uh, about the whiskey painters. Yeah. And uh, gosh, I just keep getting all these good things. It's really sweet. Be sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel.